Hey guys, welcome back to your next class of Catalyst Concepts. So, in the previous session, we looked at how do we extract our crude metal from the ore. So, we are today at the last stage of the process, which is purification. Now, purification is needed because when you extract crude metal from the ore, it's not completely pure. There will be some impurities or the other that are left in it due to the process by which we are extracting. Uh, like for example, you'll have some anions that come from an electrolysis process. You kind of have uh, just bits of uh, ore that has not been purified or not been extracted properly. So you'll still have some of the other impurity. Many could also be non-metals that just got mixed in somehow during the process. So uh, depending on uh, which one you're, which metal you're trying to purify, you can use different different processes when it comes to purification. So there are four. process that we can talk about right so uh, when it comes to purification let's talk about one process at a time uh, there's something called distillation this process called polling uh, there's something called as liquidation and there is electrolytic refining basically a form of electrolysis okay so we'll go over these one at a time. So let's go with distillation first. Now distillation as a process we've studied about when it comes to water, we say distilled water. Right? So distilled water is nothing but water, you heat it, you let it evaporate and then once you, it cools down, you just let it cool down in another chamber. So when it distills, it only have pure water left. Similarly, you can use distillation whenever you have uh, impurities of different types. Say that your metal has low boiling point and your impurity has a high boiling point. So in that case, you can use this method. So what happens is if you have a metal with low boiling point, you just heat the metal, uh, heat your metal and you let it melt completely and evaporate. Once it does evaporate, it will condense separately and the, not, the impure metal will not yet evaporate because its boiling point is higher, right? So you just make sure it's heated to the right uh, temperature and you let it condense separately and you'll have your pure metal remaining. Now, another process is called as polling. It kind of is, uh, you know, you didn't take the hint from the name itself. You basically use a long green pole. Okay, uh, a wooden pole basically. So what happens with this wooden pole, you just take it and you stir all this molten uh, solution of your impure metal that you have. Okay, due to this what happens is, uh, because of this wood, there will be certain reactions that happen uh, within, these, uh, within your molten solution. So you'll either create some sort of a gas, right, that is going to uh, escape. Okay, or it will form different compounds that will uh, separate from the metal. Okay, so uh, it is a form of oxidation, let's say. Okay, so some sort of oxidation process will happen and the pure metal will get left behind and whatever uh, impurity comes up, it will come, it's called as slag. Okay, so all of this slag kind of gets accumulated on top of your pure metal and that slag can be removed and what you will have remaining with you at the bottom is nothing but your pure metal uh, at the bottom. Uh, this pure metal also is kind of protected by these gases. These gases that are created will not allow your metal to get oxidized. Okay. Third process is liquidation, which again kind of like the name. So if you have certain metals mixed with metals that are of a high boiling point, right? Say for example, tin is a metal that has a low boiling point. So what do you do? Kind of like the uh, process of sloping that we studied. You just take a mild slope and you heat your all of your metal. Right? The one with the low boiling point is going to melt and flow away along the slope and it will cool down and solidify along the slope. Any impurity that has a high boiling point just gets stayed behind, it won't go anywhere. 
So what you'll be left with is the pure metal, which has solidified after the process. Now, finally, electrolytic refining. Again, we're talking about the process of electrolysis over here. So in electrolysis, what happens, uh, we have an anode and a cathode. So you will be using pretty much the same process with a slight difference. And the difference being, you know, there are two terminals in the electrolysis process, right? We have the anode, we have the cathode. So uh, your cathode is nothing but your negative terminal and your anode is nothing but your positive terminal. So your anode is nothing but your impure metal. Okay. So for example, let's take copper. So if you have copper, this is your impure copper and your cathode is going to be your pure copper metal. Okay. You just take a sample of a pure metal. And this solution is not water, but you'll actually have a salt of that metal. So if it's copper, you'll have copper sulfate salt solution and with a slightly uh, you know, acidic in nature, you just add a little bit of acid for the conduction part. So once this is done, then what happens is there are uh, two things happening. From this impure metal, only the copper actually takes part in this electrifying process. So the copper metal over here is going to lose two electrons. Okay. So the copper at the anode is becoming copper ion and lose electrons. Now, once it becomes a copper ion, it gets attracted to the negative terminal. So at the negative terminal, the cathode, the copper ions are again going to get unified with the electrons and form copper metal. So on this little piece of pure metal that you have, you will have this uh, fresh pure metal that is coming out of the uh, anode and deposit on top of your pure cathode. Okay. Any impurity that remains is just going to kind of just fall down over here below the anode. And this is not called as nothing but anode mud. Again, we do not. It just like kind of trickles down and that's not needed by, by later on. Typically used for, like we say, copper. Right.